book in the front of your Bible. <laughs> it's Joel chapter Amos. two. It's yeah. after Hosea. Or you can go to the book of Acts chapter two. And we'll read the same thing. Same thing. Pretty close, anyway. Yeah, Pete did a good job. Pete quoted pretty close to uh, word for word. There's a few that are different. And then I'm the last one there, probably. Chapter 2, verse 28. And uh, in writing the book, there's a, there's a connection between chapter two. Uh, uh, verse 27 and 28 where the last uh, phrase is my, <clears throat> and my people shall never be ashamed and you can read the book to find out what the, the connection is and it came and shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and so we were talking about prophets we we're talking about prophecy and uh, just how how to to go about understanding that whole thing uh, a little bit better. Um, and so I, I've got to just thinking a little bit. Okay, Lord, um, we seem to have a little more insight to the prophet from the Old Testament than we do from the New Testament. Obviously, there's prophets mentioned in the New Testament, but not a lot uh, of uh, in-depth uh, uh, information. So <clears throat> I got to thinking, and hopefully the Lord was helping me in my thinking. And uh, there are some unlikely prophets in the Old Testament. Did you know that? There's some people that... <clears throat> we might not expect to be in the category. Um, I think of Balaam, no, we're not gonna go into him, but he was, uh, as we read later, gain understanding somewhat from the book of Jude, he, Jude, he was a prophet for hire. He, he did it for, for money. Uh, but there's another person that was a prophet that was, uh, to me, uh, Kind of an unusual person, and we find that from the book of First Kings, chapter nineteen, I believe. We just got to Joel. <laughs> All right, First Kings nineteen. <laughs> okay, so we we read that from Joel. The sons and daughters shall prophesy, and sometimes uh, okay. uh, that, I, I read that because here. We give the time frame for that particular passage as uh, uh, the end times, even though Peter said this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. So he said, what you're hearing here, when these people got the Holy Ghost and they're speaking in tongues and, and the Spirit has fallen, he said this is what Joel was prophesying about. So he applied it to... Uh, the church at the beginning, but as we read Joel, we find out that the prophecy itself was actually given to uh, 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 for the end times, as as we read after the the manifestation of the Spirit being poured out. Immediately, it goes into, and there shall be signs in the heavens, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The the end time signs. So we understand then that uh, uh, the time frame is both in time and beginning, uh, which to me that, that makes the statement that the Holy Ghost didn't change. Mm -hmm. um, some people teach that uh, it, in, after the word of God was all written, uh, tongues and all of that was done away with. Uh, but that's uh, I'm laughing because I'm, I'm struggling to find where I want to go next here. Um, I, I've told you Kings, right? 
19, right? 13, 19. No, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go actually to 1 Samuel chapter 19. You see the 14? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, so so we're gonna, we're going to see something here. I think is maybe somewhat surprising, but it also gives a little bit of uh, insight to this thing called prophecy. And I'll start reading at verse eighteen. It says, "So they chapter." Um, sorry, nineteen. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Verse 18 of chapter 19. So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel to Ramah and told him all that Samuel had done to him, or that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naioth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naioth in Ramah. Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David, and when they saw the company of the prophets, watch this. When they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. So these guys are just going to go get David. Saul sends him to go get David. And here when these men, these messengers of Saul, come to get David, they come into this atmosphere. I'll just call it a prophetic atmosphere. Now we had Samuel watching over it, but you've got these prophets and they're all prophesying. And the messengers of Saul get close. And the next thing you know, they're prophesying. Okay, so it's, it gives a little bit of insight to this working of this uh, of this ministry called uh, prophetic ministry. That it seems to be. Can I use the word like COVID? <laughs> Contagious. Contagious. Mm. And it's not that they were really qualified. They weren't really uh, probably called. Mm. But just getting in the atmosphere caused them to be able to move into that ability, uh, maybe call it a gift, mm. to where they too began to prophesy. Now, if we were to think about that just a little bit, we might consider times when the word of prophecy comes to the church. And uh, one thing we always say, say is when, well, I'll, I'll just lump all the vocal gifts together, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. We say that there is a spirit of utterance. We, hear, we have a spirit of utterance in this place. Well, what that spirit of utterance is, is a spirit of prophecy. It might manifest itself in tongues. It might manifest itself in interpretation of tongues. Or it might be manifest simply as a prophecy. But it's that spirit <coughs> that we all recognize as the spirit of utterance. And that, I would tend to think, is what happened when these messengers of Saul came. And they got into the mix of all of this. They felt the same thing that the prophets were feeling. Mm. And consequently, <coughs> they were able to, to go ahead and move into the same ministry gift that the prophets had. So <clears throat> what does that mean to us? It means that um, it's possible to just get into it because it's there. And uh, <clears throat> I, I know that when that spirit of utterance or the atmosphere of prophecy, whatever you want to call it, settles in on a church, uh, numerous people feel that unction to go. Mm -hmm. And then who actually does, uh, I, I don't know that... Uh, it's a, a matter of uh, 
of uh, God's will that it's this person, this person, it's, or this person. It might just be the first person <clears throat> to make the move. Mm. Um, a personal experience, and I probably told you this before, so bear with me. Was a camp meeting. I know some of you heard this. And anything I've ever said before, I always have a hard time saying it again. And you're going, say it, just say it. <laughs> uh, brother in camp meeting was, we were all worshiping, and everybody's settling down, but this guy, and I'm right behind him. And I'd rather just keep praying with him than to settle with the rest. So I just kept on going along with him, and it kept building, 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 and I'm building along with him. And all of a sudden, I realized nobody else is doing this. And uh, I go, oh, I know. He's going to give a message in tongues. So I know that it's my turn to back off and let him. And immediately when I stopped, he began to blurt out uh, or to give. I don't blurt out may not be reverent enough, but <coughs> he began to, to, to give forth the, the tongues. And so I, it was a good lesson for me that uh, I, I, I walked all the way up to the point of giving the message in tongues with the man. Uh, and so I knew how to get there. Mm -hmm. Part of it, brother, is, is that we just need to know how to get there. Mm -hmm. We need to know and the, the, the path of moving up to that point. Uh, and it would probably surprise us all if God were to help us. And he, I'm, I'm sure he is wanting to help us. But uh, sometimes because of our lack of experience, we don't know what the Spirit's doing. Mm -hmm. I, I know we've talked about this a little bit, uh, but healing, <coughs> healing is something that God wants to do, I believe, more often. Yeah. But too many of God's people don't know how to walk to the point, to the brink, of letting that healing manifest itself. Mm -hmm. I would have been in this time when, you know, all, all of this contagious stuff is going on and, and people around us are, are literally passing. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not to say, or I'm not trying to say that God wants to, to heal everybody, but I know the ministry of Jesus was such that when he went into a town, the Bible said, and he healed them all. Mm -hmm. and all that came to him were healed it wasn't like he was all that selective and yet in the church um, we, we don't see that same absolute taking place and of course we can say well that's Jesus but I think that we need to have uh, a little more uh, hunger or a little more aggression if I don't know if that's the right word to use but to step on into those areas that maybe they're intimidating to us maybe we're afraid of them I, I found out that all the gifts of the spirit the first time you use them are are intimidating they're like oh no not me and I people when I was in the Lord young, they said, pray for the gifts of the Spirit, pray for the gifts of the Spirit. And so I prayed for the gifts of the Spirit. And the next thing I know, God's dealing with me and talking to me about being used and, and ready for me to do that. I go, no, I'm praying not to be used because it's not what you think. It's not, it's, it's, uh, it's scary. It's to the flesh. The flesh doesn't want to do it. And I, I, I feel the Lord talking to me in this area. And he, he, he got kind of just goes, okay, it's your choice. It's here. It's for you. It's about to happen if you want it to. But I'll tell you what. This is the Lord talking to me. I'll tell you what. If you don't do it, you're going to feel really bad. And I go, okay, I know I'm going to feel really bad. Can you imagine having that right there and saying no to God then walking out? You're going to feel bad because God wanted to use you and you didn't go all the way with But these guys, these messengers of Saul, they came into this prophetic atmosphere 
And they were, it looks to me like they were overwhelmed with it. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just, the supernatural became natural to them. And that's where the church begins to flourish in the works of the Spirit is when it only seems not only right, but we don't have to force ourselves into it because the presence of God is there in such a manner that uh, it's only what we know we should do. And it just, I, I use the word flow, and it flows. So we keep reading here. Um, Saul sent messengers to take David, verse 20. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. So they just got in the atmosphere, and they, and, and you know, what was going on, brother? Well, I mean, here they, here these messengers come, and the company of prophets are just prophesying. They're just doing it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> the church gets a prophecy once every two months, and we're all excited when it happens. Here, it's they're just prophesying. So much so, and so strong was the spirit that these people that came to get David couldn't help themselves, and they began to, to prophesy too. Hmm. 21, 1, verse 21. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, some that weren't quite so spiritual, some that weren't quite so close to God, because they can't be having those <coughs> messengers go and end up prophesying when he wanted them to get David. That was their mission. Their mission was not to prophesy, so he sent some other messengers, and it says, guess what? They also prophesied. So it didn't matter who it was. Sometimes we build up the person. And it's not really the person at all. It's the manifestation of the Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit of prophecy. And what is maybe more needful than me doing it or you doing it and, and saying I've got that gift or... Is, is to learn how to let that spirit manifest, manifest itself in, in the church. Mm. Okay, and then 22, and then went out, then went he also to Ramah. He said, okay, these guys aren't getting it done. These, these messengers aren't doing what I want them to do, so guess what Saul does? He's going to go himself. Then went... He also to Ramah and came to a great well that is Sichu, and he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they are at Naiel in Ramah. And he went thither to Naiel in Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naiel in Ramah. And he and he, he got there, and they're prophesying, and it says, and he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner. Can you think of somebody else that took their clothes off? David. 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 All right. Royal. Royal clothes. The clothing of the king. You can't be the king and prophesy. You can't be the, the high and the mighty one and prophesy. Being a prophet is not an exalted position. Like the king is an exalted position. The prophet is not an exalted position. It's a position of servitude. It's a spirit of humility. And it's a spirit of yielding to that presence of God that wants to do this thing called prophesy. He stripped off his, verse 24, he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. <laughs> Wherefore they say, is Saul also among the prophets? He got himself a reputation, an unexpected mm -hmm. reputation. 
Like it can't be this guy, but this is what God does. He, he takes people that man says <clears throat> never happened. David himself was not thought to be worthy to be considered even mm -hmm. to be the one to be anointed king. Samuel says, bring him. I'm not going to sit down until he comes. And we see this last uh, son of Jesse. Mm -hmm. And of course, he's the one that God had in mind all along to anoint. We don't know how to judge the hearts of people. Right. We do it by what we see with our eyes. Mm -hmm. But a man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And sometimes the heart of people that don't look qualified is more prepared than the heart of those that seem to be qualified. And, and so uh, here's Saul. And I'm laughing because it says, and he laid down naked before the Lord all day and night. Did you ever get into kind of prayer where time didn't matter no more? Mm. Did you ever get into that deep Holy Ghost atmosphere where it's okay to just keep praying and praying and praying? In fact, you don't even want to stop praying. Mm. This, is, this is what was happening here uh, to the messengers of Saul, and then finally to Saul himself. And so what do we take out of that, uh, that uh, story is that maybe more important than who it is as a person is what is being manifest in the church. Is the spirit of prophecy being manifest? Are we allowing it to happen? Or is flesh <clears throat> keeping it from coming and doing what it wants to do? Now, of course, we read in 1 Corinthians that uh, there was uh, kind of a little too much tongues in interpretation. Paul had to sit down and say, you know, let's just do this two or at the most three times. Um, and uh, so we don't want to get overboard on any one thing, but we don't want to shut down that one thing either. He said, I pray, or I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. And, uh, and so um, that, that's, just, that's just one little thing that kind of came to me that... Uh, it, it was a few weeks ago, and I know we've mentioned this, Monty, and we probably keep mentioning it, but what was happening? There was a spirit manifesting itself in our prayer at the end of a little group here. Mm -hmm. And as that spirit manifests itself, that Holy Ghost prophetic spirit of utterance came, and we heard a voice, <laughs> And it was an unusual voice. It wasn't a voice that we were expecting, perhaps. But uh, even the one that gave it wasn't expecting it. And, and so Monty begins to speak in this gift of tongues. And uh, I'm not going to go through the whole story, but we had, you know, after encouragement, uh, a couple times, it came forth. It came forth. And... Uh, so part of it is that we need to manifest the right spirit for prophetic utterance to come. Right. Um, does that mean that every time we go to church or come to a meeting that we should try to make prophecy happen? No. It's about what does God want tonight? Right. What does he want on Sunday morning? What is he trying to do? Is there a sensitivity in the church to the working of the Holy Ghost. And if there's that sensitivity and that spirit can manifest itself, then it hardly matters who it is right. that actually does the work because it doesn't make that person a great person. And it doesn't mean if you didn't do it that you're not also a great person. <laughs> We're all great. Bible says, that uh, Jesus said, doesn't the scripture say you're gods? 
It doesn't mean that we are deity as God is God, but it does mean that there's uh, the word means mighty. Mighty. We don't think of ourselves as mighty, but when the Holy Ghost is ministering and moving and speaking, it feels like we're mighty. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's something powerful going on. Mm -hmm. And so we want to allow for that. Um, I've thought of some uh, other things. Um, what are these guys doing? What, what kind of deal were they having? Were these Samuels over these prophets and they're, just, they're prophesying? What are they... What's the purpose in that? And I don't know that I can answer that. I, I can't say, well, this is what they were doing. But there must have been some kind of purpose. God wanted to speak to his people about some things, and he was using these prophets to manifest what he once said to the people. Um, and the fact that they were doing it when the first company comes and they join in and they prophesy and they were doing it again when the second company comes and they join in and prophesy and they're still doing it when Paul or Saul comes and they, it, it seems like it's not a, an unusual thing. It's, and, and so we read in the Old Testament, um, I don't know if the word is actually used where we say that school of the prophets but the term the sons of the prophets. Remember Elijah and remember Elisha? Mm -hmm. and, and Elisha is following Elijah. And Elijah says, I've got to go today. I'm, I'm leaving. And, uh, and Elisha says, I'm going to follow you. And, uh, and he says, no, you stay here. But he follows him anyway. And uh, he follows him from where? Uh, Gilgal, Bethel, wherever, ever. Uh, and finally they get to the Jordan River. I'm trying to think. I, I, I got to leave that alone. It's okay. Wherever. <laughs> and um, as we read the story, Elisha is not going to let Elijah go. He's going to be there. And, and so sometimes it's about who you hang with. <coughs> If you want to be with the prophet, or if you want to prophesy, you're probably going to have to hang with the prophet. Mm -hmm. Now this is, I'm going to just get a little critical here. If there are no recognized prophets, who are you going to hang with? <laughs> I want to learn about being a prophet. I need to know who the prophet is. But if nobody's a prophet, we don't allow for prophets. How do I know that? How do you know that? And so consequently, there's a, there's a stifling in the learning process. And God, what did Moses say? Uh, the, the two guys in the camp, and they were prophesying? That's a, that's a deal there. And here comes the tattletales to Moses and they say, so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so are prophesying in the camp. Uh, what, did you, what did Moses say? Anybody remember? He said, would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets. Mm. They were saying, Moses, don't let them do that. That's your job. And Moses says, no. Oh, I want all, I, I went to God that everybody oh, could prophesy. That's a good point. Yeah. Oh. And we don't want, we don't want uh, a prophet to be the man. Mm. That's not what God's intention is. And of course, he's used prophets in a great way, and they were great men. But that's not the point of the prophet. The prophet is to let God speak. And there's plenty of need <laughs> for that. I'm thinking of uh, the book of Isaiah. It says, uh, Ye that fear the word of the Lord, tremble and fear the word of the Lord. 
and I won't go into all of that, but godly fear comes through the prophetic word. Amen. When that boy speaks and that word comes forth, there is a reverence to the word of God. And I don't, right. I know there's a reverence to this word, but there's also a reverence to the word that comes forth as the spirit brings the utterance right. out. Um, I had a thought and it's disappeared. So from the Old Testament, we, we gather that that there is um, an abundance of prophetic utterances being given and that it's not an exclusive position that only one or two people in Israel are holding. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of prophets speaking the word of God a lot of times. And it brings me to another, the next point that kind of came to my mind is that they did this prophecy rather continually. And we've already pointed that out. But remember when the church was born on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. and the Bible says that God added to the church daily. And they were daily in the temple, worshiping and praying and uh, praising God. And so it wasn't on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. It was a daily thing. Now, whether or not... Uh, we're supposed to meet daily. I, I, I don't know that. I'm not saying that we are. But I know one thing. You need to meet him every day. Right. You need to meet with him every day. Right. You need to get into that mode even if it's all by yourself. If you've got a prayer partner that prays with you, that's, that's, that's great too. And if you have a prayer meeting to go to, that's even better. Because you know what? It's in those prayer meetings that this manifestation can start taking place. Mm -hmm. When people kind of throw off the idea that the prayer meeting has to be the way we think it's supposed to be and let it start being the way that God wants it to be. All of a sudden, there might be some more liberty uh, to speak the word of God coming to people that we might not expect to be giving that word. But who are we to withhold or to to deny somebody and say you're not qualified. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Ghost that comes on a person and whoever he wants to mm -hmm. uh, can do this thing. The Bible tells us he gives to men severally as he wills. Whatever he wants to do, he can give it to whoever. All of this qualification stuff can get carried away right. if we're not 